micron level. Uh, so the output or what is expected of the center is that we will have uh, design, artificial intelligence, user facilities, demonstration lab, and of course scientific output, which is why we are collaborating with the universities uh, as well as training future scientists and engineers who will have a publication output. And in the future, when the building is finished, we will have training workshops. Now I'll tell you my vision when it comes to working even with high school students and even at the barangay level, okay? So uh, to, uh, to update you with what's happening with AMSEN, since the beginning of this year we started the training phase. So in fact, very soon the first set of trainings will be coming back here in the Philippines. They've been training with me from three months to six months. Uh, in fact, Dr. Basilia just came back uh, after a month, one month stay in the lab and uh, she has a lot of things to, to update you and of course very productive output. Now the procurement phase uh, is also going on parallel. It's very important for us to work with our local suppliers, our vendors, but also very important to get the best machines from the manufacturers themselves abroad. I myself, in my lab, I have 15 3D printers. And uh, at the Think Box, we have several major 3D printers. So what you can expect is that uh, as the ecosystem of 3D printing becomes a reality in the Philippines, uh, bringing the best machines, even manufacturing machines here in the future in the Philippines, is uh, coming. But to, to bring the best machines, of course, we need to make it cost effective and we need to invest in it. Not only the, the center, but also our partners. That's why it's very important our signing uh, partnership uh, today with locators and partners. Uh, we will treat you as partners because we want to grow the industry together with you. And we hope that AMSEN will be the place that we can grow this together. Uh, the building, congratulations to engineer Lisa, okay, it's in place, contract-wise, not the building, okay? So he promised, uh, April 2020, is engineer Lisa here? You will hold him to this promise, huh? April 2020, we'll have the building here, okay? Uh, demonstration lab uh, will be really an operation by Rapid Lab <laughs> Tech. They will build an ecosystem where all of you can try out machines, can come, participate in workshops, and, and uh, use or try or even use the facilities for limited production or testing. So as a demonstration laboratory, we actually patterned it after Oak Ridge National Lab. There was a benchmarking that was done uh, between uh, the leaders at somewhere in February, and we figured that that was the best model uh, going forward for AMSEN. Uh, definitely uh, uh, talks, collaborations, uh, the uh, contracts, uh, we are partnering with industry and academe and of course today we are having our first big conference and then uh, hopefully training. So up to date we are working, you are here where we are seeing that the fruit of uh, the labors between uh, MacDev and Rapid Tech, but for sure we would like to partner with you. So it all started back in 2016. So this is actually uh, uh, a slide that shows one of the first batches that trained at Case Western Reserve University. And a very successful run. To date, we've had about 20 papers, publications that are very highly cited, very high impact factor. But I think the, the best uh, output I could see are those who come back to the Philippines and bring that ecosystem, practice that ecosystem, and then see the vision. And I'm talking here specifically, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Professor Dizon, Kokoi Dizon of Batam Peninsula State University, who has the vision to establish his own AMREL, okay, additive manufacturing laboratory. It's actually a great facility. So next time you are in Balaga, Batam, you should see his operation, okay, uh, and, and so on. So there are other universities that have participated and will participate in this training. And this was ably led with a program from uh, USD here. Uh, I'm partnering with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, C.P. David 
and now with uh, uh, Eric Perrin. Now, talk about high school, okay? So, I myself, in my laboratory, we have trained more than 50 high school students in various capacities. And this was actually uh, some of the undergraduate students at the time that I took to Ateneo de Davao University. We held a workshop there on 3D printing. This was back in 2017, okay? Where we invited students from Davao City High School, Philippine Science High School in Davao, and explored, explained the ecosystem for 3D printing. So hats off to you if you're a high school principal, teacher, and you want to initiate 3D printing. That is the future. This definitely will go to the high school level. And key towards inspiring your, your future engineers and scientists is start them early. Okay? Make them solve problems. Make them uh, create art pieces. But make them also look at functionality of materials. Again, I'm going to emphasize materials because when you try to use a 3D printer, you have to buy the plastic. Sang bagaling yung plastic na yon. Most of it is imported. But what if we can use recycled plastic? What if we can use, you know, agricultural waste and add it to plastic? Or what can we use metal that just corrodes and regrind it to make into a raw material for 3D printing? We will save a lot of money. Okay. Moreover, my vision is I hope certain industries will develop in the Philippines to supply the 3D printing manufacturing uh, ecosystem. Okay. Now, more recently, uh, this is just a collage of uh, the trainees at Case Western Reserve University. They're exposed to the different methods of 3D printing, how to repair 3D printing. printers, believe it or not, that's part of the training, because things break down. Okay. I want you to know the printer inside and out. And then a lot of aspects of materials because I want them to learn how to test uh, 3D printers, how to uh, stress them. Okay, sino pa sa inyo stress today? I hope you're not stressed. But in my laboratory, we make it our business to stress 3D printed parts. Okay, because doing so, we we will know how long they will last. So here here it is. Back in 2016, I gave this talk in Dubai, the World Economic Forum where I explain the vision that one of these days, 3D printing will play a lot in your health to 3D print bio implants. It will play a lot in space colonization. Imagine in the moon, you cannot bring steel, you cannot bring uh, paper, whatever, because mahal. But what if you can bring a 3D printer that uses moon dust? Okay, so you can start making your moon base. Actually, my favorite part of this slide is that coral looking piece. You know why? Because that explains beauty and function. We can borrow a lot from nature simply by copying. So I can use a scanner and uh, scan a shellfish, a tree, and everything. But actually, the inside of those uh, living organisms or exoskeletons, they were built by nature to be optimized for function, okay? So bio-inspiration actually is one of the things that will be unlocked by 3D printing. And then you can see there uh, a lot of exoskeleton, robotics, okay? Uh, in robotics, it will play a very important role because you can test new designs very fast without using formative manufacturing. Now today, and I hope you'll take the chance today, tomorrow, to look at the 3D printers. Definitely you can buy your own 3D printer, okay? Uh, what do you want? Do you want to buy Ultimaker? Or do you want to buy uh, uh, Formlabs, a little plug-in? Okay? So they're affordable, okay? And you can, you can buy them from Lazada, I think, right? Amazon or Lazada, okay? But you can buy them here, I think they'll give you a special discount. Our, our, uh, our friends here. Um, but you can see here, these are actually commercial uh, instruments. They can be as small or as big as you want. That per particular one um, with a scale of uh, a man standing is a big area printing machine. It's also a rapid printing machine. 
Actually, Carbon, which I know the uh, owner, uh, is a multi-billion dollar company now, can 3D print in a matter of seconds, okay? Apart, seconds to minutes, not hours. So definitely, uh, there's more advances in, to come in terms of size, materials, and scale. Actually, back in 1997, this was my introduction to 3D printing. So when I was a, uh, when I was doing a postdoc at Stanford, there was a professor from uh, Harvard University who gave a talk on bio implants, and then she introduced to me the term two photon polymerization. So without being too techy, okay, two photon polymerization versus one photon, it's a step away from a technique called SLA. SLA uh, makes use of monomer resins that can go to polymerize. But at that time, you can see the resolution, and two photon polymerization still exists. It can 3D print a very, very fine feature as small as the human hair, and even smaller. Uh, 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 you can use them for nanofabrication. But that is 3D printing. That is 3D printing in a scale that we don't see uh, with our naked eye. On the other hand, biomedical applications is real. In fact, I don't have much uh, in terms of dental application, but the dental industry is rapidly going into 3D printing, okay? And uh, digital, uh, digital uh, manufacturing. Now, I like this slide, not only because it shows uh, some orthopedic prosthesis devices, but the, the uh, feature of the bone, the uh, x-ray of the hand, and actually, if you look at the bones all over your body, iba iba in density, meaning the bone here is very much designed to get, carry heavy load. Okay. On the other hand, your your cheekbones here are designed to be light but strong. Okay. So your difference to density and strength, or strength to weight ratio, is a very subtle thing that cannot easily be matched by metals, metal alloys, which is the the most predominant uh, um, titanium alloy in bike use. So the thing that we can do with 3D printing is we can change the density. So you can see here the different infill designs for geometry. So you can change the inside of that bone design such that it can have optimum, optimum function isotropically. I, again, I don't want to be too techy, but what impresses me with 3D printing is Pinaksama nyo yung design in materials, okay? Which is, in fact, the way 3D printing should go. 3D printing is not limited to the machine. 3D printing is materials plus machine. I hope you remember that, okay? Uh, mga high school teachers, uh, even universities, do not focus only on machine. Focus also on materials. And you will have a very rich uh, program and training as well. Okay. Now, here is a picture of automotive, aerospace parts, even engine parts that can be 3D printed. What you can see here is an old design, a new design, composite parts. Actually, I like that picture with the combustion engine because there are some plastics that are capable of functioning like metals. So, so 3D printing, we want to blur the distinction between metal and polymer. Okay, I want you to blur that because there can be a crossover. Pwede yung polymer, kakabitin mo sa metal. Pwede yung metal, the advantage of polymer. In fact, sa gitna nun, you can use ceramic. Okay, we can 3D print eventually ceramic. So hopefully, the AMSEN can answer and will be the host to a lot of advanced machines. Uh, so actually, with the fab labs, with the high school printers or the university printers, you may not have much capabilities in your in-house 3D printing, but hopefully you can elevate your problem or your projects to AMSEN because AMSEN will house the best machines capable of multi-material printing, meaning marami tayong pwede i-print, hindi lang yung ibibigay ng vendor. Okay. Now, how about construction? Pwede bang gamitin ito ng... Uh, Um, for, for buildings, uh, okay? Uh, ano ba yung mga malalaking company? Uh, 3D printing of cement is right here. You can 3D print. Uh, 
or disaster relief. Okay. But one of the things that's coming with 3D printing is you can use it for making molds for cement. Okay. You can use it for molds for different types of uh, um, manufacturing purposes. So it's coming. So let me show you some graphs here. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you can see it clearly, but you have the cost and you have geometric complexity. Okay. So the current sta or standard practice of manufacturing, the cost is low, but you can produce a lot of parts. Now with 3D printing, a big advantage is complexity. Uh, a lot of the design and forms cannot be matched easily with 3D printed parts. That's why maganda ito for lightweight thing. Pwede natin gumawa ng mga advanced design na instead of 10 parts, dalawang parts na lang ang i-assemble mo. No? Instead of using the old design, you can make your new design and, and better in function. And now this, uh, this is also a very good graph because lot size or production volume on the left on the y-axis and then the complexity. So right now, your traditional manufacturing, formative manufacturing, can come up with a big lot size but the expensive part is the mold or the tool. But with 3D uh, additive manufacturing, the disadvantage is you cannot produce 10 million pieces. You can produce maybe 10, 100, okay, because the cost is high. But again, the advantage. The advantage is it's uh, 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 more complex and higher performance. Uh, actually, the cost is comparable to machining. So if you're familiar with machining, hindi na nalayo yung cost. Uh, but then here's a summary of the different uh, uh, techniques and terminology. I'm not going to read them one by one. Tomorrow uh, you will hear about them. Uh, and that those terms will be, become familiar. SLA, SLS, DMLS, FDM, and so on. Now, I want to show this because I want to show you a problem. The problem is a 3D printing. No? A technique called FDM or fused deposition modeling deposits layers of plastic. Every time you deposit a plastic, you actually quench the plastic. You see no solidifying pressure from the belt. And whenever you do that, you, you trap air. You also change the crystallinity. So it is a million, in terms of research, very rich, very rich at 3D printing because you can improve materials in design by solving these problems. And part of what we do in our lab is to solve the problems using nanomaterials. Okay. Rapid prototyping, as I mentioned, it's coming. Okay. You can uh, even produce hundreds of parts now. Plastic. Okay, everybody's familiar with plastic. Can we 3D print plastic? Yes, we can. Can we 3D print recycled plastic? Yes, we can. Metals, used for uh, manufacturing, uh, used for uh, uh, by casting or different formative methods, can you 3D print them? Yes, you can. Uh, plastics, uh, you can go to what we call high performance polymers like PIC or PI, uh, so that you can do better than you know, ABS or 